Okay, good morning and welcome to a regular meeting of a panel of utility commissioners and staff of the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority held today, Wednesday, September 15th, 2021 at 10 a.m. by remote teleconference. My name is Chairman Marissa Gillette and I'm joined virtually today by my colleagues, the Vice Chairman Jack Bukowski and Commissioner Michael Karen, along with a number of authority staff. Today, we have a regular calendar and consent calendar in front of us. Uh, before I begin, I want to make one um, typo uh, correction for the record, please. On the agenda, uh, under the dual item, um, number two in the regular calendar, uh, the, the numbers were inadvertently transposed. Um, it should be docket number 200301 one one rather than 200103 one one So, um, wait. Uh, uh, transposing of the numbers there. Um, the, docu the docket header is correct, however. Uh, so with that correction, um, I'd like to turn to uh, the substance of the regular calendar. Uh, we'll begin with the first item on the agenda, which is docket number 190701, REO1, the review of the statewide shared clean energy facility program requirements the reopener is focused on the customer enrollment provisions uh, of that program. So I'd like to turn to authority staff, uh, Mr. Jake Reiner, to uh, present the decision for the authority's consideration, please. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, today's decision in docket number 190701 one establishes processes for identifying verifying and enrolling customers of Connecticut's electric distribution companies in the state's Shared Clean Energy Facility Program, or SCEF. Uh, the processes would apply to all SCEFs reaching commercial operation going forward. With today's decision, the authority fully implements Section 16-244Z, subsection A1C of the General Statutes of Connecticut, whereby certain customers of the state's EDCs may receive on-bill savings from the annual procurement of 25 megawatts of SCEFs with a particular focus on providing savings to customers with low to moderate income, low income service organizations, and customers who reside in environmental justice communities. The authority issued its decision authorizing the SCEF program on December 18th, 2019, and issued a decision approving certain modifications to the program on April 28th of this year. The authority initiated this proceeding on January 17th, 2020, to receive the EDC's proposed processes to identify, verify, and directly enroll eligible customers to meet 80% of the out estimated output of a SCEF and ensure that the remaining 20% is fully subscribed. The EDC's subsequently filed a joint engagement plan, engagement status report, and proposed customer identification, verification, and enrollment processes, which were vetted with various stakeholders through a working group. The authority subsequently held a series of technical meetings and received a refiled version of the proposals from the EDCs. The authority then requested stakeholder comments on the modified processes before issuing a proposed final decision on August 27th and receiving written exceptions on September 9th. This decision, if adopted, would establish processes to identify eligible customers using existing data sources to the furthest extent possible while leveraging community partners to identify and verify additional eligible customers. The decision would also establish enrollment processes for four enrollment categories. First, 20% of SCEF capacity would be allocated to low-income customers, prioritizing those that participate in the EDC's hardship programs and reside in environmental justice communities through a random selection process. If a SCEF is located on a landfill or brownfield, customers in the host municipality that participate in the EDC's hardship programs would be prioritized in the selection process. Next, 40% of SCEF capacity would be allocated to low and moderate income customers, low income service organizations, and affordable housing entities. And further, 20% would be allocated to small businesses. In addition to the eligible customers identified above and pursuant to section 16-244Z of the Connecticut General Statutes, in the authority's 2019 decision establishing the SCEF program. SCEF subscriptions are also available to state, municipal, and commercial customers, as well as residential customers, other than low to moderate income customers who either reside in a rental property or otherwise do not control the property's roof or are unable to install solar panels on the roof. 
All eligible customers would be able to submit a subscriber enrollment form to be considered for the remaining 20% of SCEF capacity, which would also be allocated through random selection. If adopted, this decision would establish important processes that would help reduce the energy burden of some of the state's most underserved residents. Staff recommends approval. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Reiner. <clears throat> uh, is there a motion to approve? Adopt, Madam Chairman. Chairman, I have a second. Thank you. Uh, the item has been regularly moved and seconded. Uh, seeing no questions or comments, I would like to take the roll, please. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. The item is approved. So we'll turn to the second item on our agenda. This is the decision that addresses uh, two dockets. Uh, docket number 210103. Here is annual review of the rate adjustment mechanisms of the Connecticut Light and Power Company for the calendar year 2020. And it also addresses docket number 200301 REO1. Here is annual review of the rate adjustment mechanisms of the Connecticut Light and Power Company requirements. Uh, the reopen error was targeted at a review of the um, uh, uh, certain um, component of that surcharge, the MBF MCC. Uh, so with that, I would ask Ms. Cohane to present uh, the decision for the panel's consideration. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning to the commissioners. Um, this decision concludes the authority's examination of its annual reconciliation of Eversource's rate adjustment mechanisms, or RAM, whereby in this decision, the authority accepts the company's 2020 actual revenues and expenses and any resulting over or under recoveries for the included RAM components for the 12 month period that ended December 31st, 2020 and subject to modifications that are discussed in further in the decision. In addition, um, pursuant to the authority's decision, um, last year in docket 200101, this annual RAM proceeding also addresses Eversource's 2021 proposed rate adjustments to its delivery service rates. On November 6, 2020, the authority established this proceeding pursuant to sections 1619B, 16245G, and 16245L of the General Statutes of Connecticut and that was to review the rate adjustment mechanisms of the company's 2020 rate adjustment mechanism or RAM application. The authority then issued a notice of proceeding on November 25th, 2020. On March 1st, Ever 2021, Eversource submitted its annual RAM filing and also submitted its proposed delivery service rates with an effective um, date of May 1, 2021. The authority then issued an interim decision in this proceeding on April 28, 2021 to conditionally approve adjustments to the transmission adjustment clause, the rev revenue decoupling mechanism, the electric system improvements charge, the competitive transition assessment charge, as well as a reduction to base distribution rates that went in effect June 1st of this year. In this decision, the authority determines that no further adjustments to the um, transmission adjustment clause, revenue decoupling mechanism, electric system improvements charge, and competitive transition assessment are um, in, effect, in, in effect as of June 1st are needed to recover incremental costs associated with the calendar year 2021 revenue requirement. Further, an interim decision issued in um, April of this year, uh, the authority had directed Eversource to maintain current rates for the non-bypassable federally mandated congestion charge or the NBFMCC, as well as the system benefits charge or the SBC. Um, in this decision, following a subsequent analysis, the authority confirms that no adjustments to these NBFMCC or SBC um, delivery components for the period of October 1 through April 30th, 2020 are necessary to recover expenses associated with the 2021 calendar year revenue requirement. This decision also provides further direction relating to modifications for Eversource's future annual RAM filings. Finally, uh, and in parallel with docket 
um, this proceeding, the authority reopened the prior 2019 RAM decision, which as the chairman referenced earlier is docket 200301 ARIA-1. And that was for the limited purpose of reviewing the proposed non-contract qualifying facility expense expenditures for 2019 and the resulting over under collection um, for the NBFMCC for calendar year 19 and to address any carrying charges that may result from the deferred determination. The authority addresses this matter in this decision and makes a determination regarding the 2019 non-contract qualifying facilities. And with that, the staff recommend this decision for the panel's consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cohane. Is there a motion? I move adoption. Second. Thank you. The decision has been regularly moved and seconded. Uh, seeing no questions or comments, I would like to take the roll, please. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. The decision is approved. We'll turn to the third item on today's regular calendar, which is docket number 210104, Pura's annual review of the rate adjustment mechanisms of the United Illuminating Company. Ms. Cohane. Sure, good morning again, um, commissioners. Um, this decision is, is really a, a parallel as we just described for Eversource for the authority's annual examination of its reconciliation of the United Illuminating Company's rate adjustment mechanisms or RAM proceeding. So on November 6, 2020, the authority established this proceeding pursuant to section 1619B, 1645G, 1645 L of the Connecticut General Statutes to review the rate adjustment mechanisms for the company's 2020 RAM application. The authority issued a notice of proceeding on November 25th, 2020. On March 9th, 2021, UI submitted its annual RAM filing, and the company also submitted its proposed delivery service rates effective May to be effective May 1, 2021. In addition, on March 9th, 9th, 2021, UI submitted a proposed settlement agreement entered into with the Office of Consumer Counsel, the Attorney General's Office, the Department of Energy Environmental Protection, and PIRA's uh, Education and, and Outreach and Enforcement Division. One provision of the settlement agreement with respect to the annual RAM uh, filing proposed to have UI amortize the collection of certain 2020 net um, RAM under recoveries from 2020 from customers over a two year amortization period. On June 23rd, 2021, the authority approved an amended settlement agreement which directed UI to net the deferred um, 2020 component balances for the transmission adjustment clause and the non bypassable federally mandated congestion charge that were identified by the company against the company's accrued tax liabilities as of June 30th. 2021, which totaled over $44 million, as well as the inclusion of a $5 million contribution from UI. And this was to be um, netted through an adjustment to base distribution rates over a 22 month period beginning July 1 of this year. So in this decision, the authority accepts that the company's 2020 actual revenues and expenses and resulting over or under recoveries for the above, um, for the RAM components included in the company's filing for the 12 month period ending December 31st, 2020. Again, subject to modifications discussed um, in the decision for your consideration. Finally, the authority um, provides further direction relating to modifications to Eversource's, excuse me, UI's future RAM filings that are also described. And with that, the staff recommend this decision for the panel's consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cohane. Is there a motion? I move adoption, Madam Chairman. Second motion, Madam Chairman. Thank you. The item has been regularly moved and seconded. Uh, seeing no questions or comments, I'd like to take the roll, please. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. The decision has been approved. Uh, Thank you to staff. That brings us to the end of the um, regular calendar. So we'll turn next to the consent calendar on which there are five items. 
so I would seek a motion with respect to the consent calendar, please. Um, Chairman, I move uh, acceptance and adoption of today's consent calendar, items one through five. I uh, second it. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, the consent calendar has been regularly moved and seconded. Uh, seeing no questions or comments, I'd like uh, to take the roll, please. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. Uh, our consent calendar is adopted. That brings us to the end of today's regular calendar agenda. Uh, we will adjourn, we will reconvene for a regular meeting scheduled for Wednesday, September 22nd at 10 a.m. also by remote teleconference. Uh, thank you for attending today and we wish everyone a good rest of the week. Thank you. <laughs>